Hi everyone, a special edition here of Baden Hill Academy. We're going to give you a review. Now this is a lot, it's an avalanche of information, but we're going to give you a review of our bridges unit. So here we go. People. Number one, the Celts. The Celts were peoples who settled in Scotland and Ireland and influenced the culture there, the Celtic peoples. Remember, it's Celtic for the basketball team, but Celtic for the actual people who were kind of connected to the Germanic tribes, but somewhat different as well. The Prince of Wales. Today, Prince Charles, he will become king when Queen Elizabeth II decides that she doesn't want to be queen anymore. Uh, but uh, traditionally, this is the heir to the British throne. And Wales is proud to have this as their uh, kind of claim to fame, but you know, the Prince of Wales doesn't necessarily live in Wales. Leif Erikson, the first European to come to the New World, to North America in the year 1000 AD. He was a Viking. Uh, Beowulf was not a Viking exactly, but he was from that same people group and uh, his people were in Denmark and they, uh, the story is that Beowulf was a hero and he went to fight monsters and that piece of literature was discovered in England and is the oldest English piece of literature in written in Anglo-Saxon in the old English language. Jutes were a tribe, Jutland, Jutland is Denmark, and so the Jutes are one of the tribes with the Angles and the, Sac Angles and the Saxons who settled in England. You also have Hamlet, who was from Denmark, and he was the prince of Denmark that became famous from the Shakespeare play, but the story is much older than that, and it's basically the story of a son whose father is killed by uh, his uncle and his father's ghost comes back and asks the son to get revenge on the murderer. The Franks were the Germanic tribe that conquered Europe in the 700s uh, and in, 18, in 800, uh, the ruler of the Franks, Charlemagne, was crowned emperor by the Pope and it started the Holy Roman Empire. And uh, the Duke of Wellington is the one who who defeated Napoleon, and he was from England, and, and again, the British were very proud of defeating the French in that war. The little Dutch boy is the is from legend, uh, a small boy who saw a leak in the dike in the dam in in Holland in the Netherlands, and put his finger in and saved the town because uh, the dam would have broke uh, otherwise. Uh, Ferdinand and Isabella were the rulers of Spain at the time of Columbus and allowed him to go and represent Spain and explore, you know, and, and eventually they, he found the New World. Uh, they also were known for conquering Spain, taking it over from the Muslim Moors. The Basques are a group in Spain who wants to be, they want to be separate from the rest of Spain. They have their own language and culture. Winston Churchill was the Prime Minister of England of the UK during World War II and he lost his election after the war. But he's famous for talking about the Iron Curtain that had divided Europe into uh, the West and the East and the East was becoming communist and it had basically been taken over by the Soviet Union. Vaclav Havel is a symbol of when Eastern Europe came out of that Iron Curtain and that happened in 1989. He was a dissident writer. He wrote against the government, the communist government, and he was a playwright and he became president. He was very well known and well educated and he became president and, and guided uh, the Czech Republic and Czechoslovakia at that time through a peaceful division. And he's known as being a symbol of the post-Cold War period. The Roma people are also known as gypsies and they are different from other countries in Eastern Europe, especially in Hungary. And sometimes they are persecuted throughout Europe and throughout the world. They have a different religion, different uh, language. Viktor Orban is the, the president of Hungary today and he has formed a right-wing government. They don't want immigration and they tend to uh, make it so that Orban has more and more power as a basically a dictator. The Ottomans were also known as the Turks and that's where we get the name Turkey. Uh, the Ottomans had an empire and it, it covered much of Eastern Europe and, and so the Muslim religion did impact Eastern Europe. 
Alexander the Great was also a huge influence on Europe as he spread his empire all the way to India and then the Greek culture was spread with him. Diocletian was a Roman emperor uh, in about 300 AD who saw that the empire was too big and divided it into east and west. Uh, Woodrow Wilson was the president of the United States through World War I and then in 1919 because of his 14 points plan he uh, had this vision of the League of Nations and a peaceful world but you know a lot of his ideas didn't pan out but he did protect the tiny nation of Albania so that it wasn't carved up by the Allies after the war. Places. We'll start with the North or East European Plain. It's a band across uh, Europe of basically farmland, of plains, and just like in the United States, the Great Plains, it's good for farming. And so that's where a lot of agriculture happens. The Brittany Peninsula is not Britain, it's France and it's uh, the, the part closest to England. Uh, and so remember, Brittany is in France. The Jutland Peninsula is Denmark. It's, it juts out into the North Sea. The Scandinavian Peninsula is hanging down from the top. The countries of Norway, Sweden, Finland, that's the Scandinavian Peninsula. The Iberian Peninsula is in the, uh, the West and it's the countries of Spain and Portugal that sticks out and then is closest to Africa. The Italian Peninsula is Italy, uh, the boot. Okay, the Balkan Peninsula is basically Greece and then everything above Greece, which is all those Balkan countries that we'll talk about. The British Isles are the islands and tr traditionally they've been controlled by the Britons for hundreds and hundreds of years, even more than a thousand years. But the Irish don't want to be controlled by the British, so we have to be careful when we use that term. Uh, the UK is the United Kingdom of Great Britain, the main island, and uh, Northern Ireland, which is the, the northern part of Ireland, and that has come about because of revolution and uh, religious conflict. Uh, so Great Britain, again, is the main island of England, Scotland, and Wales. The Alps are the center of Europe, it's a basically the highest, you know, the rooftop of Europe, uh, not nearly as high as the Himalayas, but uh, it's where the Matterhorn is. Switzerland is very much uh, dominated by the Alps, so is Austria. The Apennines are the spine of Italy, the spine of the boot, okay? Just know the Alps form the, the cross of the T of the, the top part of the cross, and uh, the Apennines are the spine going down the, the boot. Uh, the Carpathians are in uh, Eastern Europe and think of Transylvania, the wild mountains that curve into Slovakia and Romania. Uh, the Pyrenees divide Spain and France and uh, the Caucasus are in the far east of Europe, the, the countries today of Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan. Uh, the Danube River goes through Vienna and goes into Hungary in Eastern Europe. And it's, again, it's a very exotic, beautiful river. Uh, they talk about the Blue Danube. The Rhine River is in Germany and goes through Cologne. Uh, the Rhone River is in Switzerland, uh, flows into Lake Geneva. The Seine River is in Paris in France. Tiber River is in Rome in Italy. Adriatic Sea and the Aegean Sea are on the two sides of Greece, the Balkan Peninsula. So you have on uh, the west side, you have the Adriatic, on the east side, you have the Aegean. And the Baltic Sea is in, you know, the far uh, northeast above Europe. Uh, and uh, the North Sea is more above the Netherlands. The Black Sea then if, is if you go further east, you have the, uh, the, the Black Sea horizontally, and then you have the Caspian Sea to the east of that. Uh, the Mediterranean Sea is again at the center, the Middle Earth. The Thames River is through London and England. Uh, Dover is where you have the White Cliffs of Dover. That's the exit point of England to the continent across the English Channel, which separates England and France. And the Straits of Dover is the northern part of that. Umri is another name for Wales. Cardiff is the capital of Wales. Mount Snowdon is the highest mountain in Wales. And then you have Northern Ireland. You have the province of Ulster in Ireland, and that 
you know, it's kind of artificially divided. The Irish don't really like this division of Ireland, neither do the British, really. It, it's still unsettled. Uh, Eire, E-I-R-E, is Ireland, another name for Ireland. Lapland is the northern part of Finland and also Sweden, and it's supposedly where Father Christmas lives with a lot of reindeer. Uh, Greenland is controlled by Denmark, even though it's right next to North America. It's controlled by Denmark, and you have the story of Greenland and Iceland. That I Calais is the other side of the English Channel from England. You have England, and then you have uh, Dover, and then you have Calais in France. Provence is on the, the Mediterranean. It's uh, a very uh, touristy area, very mild climate, very nice beaches, and uh, you have Marseille in, in that province. Lyon is a little bit above, uh, and it is uh, a city of innovation. It's it's a very populous city. Lake Geneva, we already talked about in Switzerland, and um, Geneva, the city is a special city where 50% are not Swiss. You have the Bay of Biscay, which is a, the, the chunk that's carved out of France. Uh, that's the ocean. It's a bay. Mont Blanc is a high mountain in the French Alps, and Corsica is the island controlled by France in the Mediterranean, next to Sardinia. Uh, Marseille is the uh, the city in Provence, and so Marseille is a busy port for French commerce. It's on uh, the Mediterranean side of France. And Bonn, then, we're going to move to Germany. Bonn is the old capital of Germany. Uh, know that the present day capital is Berlin, but that only happened after a reunification of East and West Germany. And Bonn is still a, a major financial center. Prussia is the old name for Germany. Uh, back before Germany became a nation, it's the area around Berlin. And so it's, it used to be its own country, and uh, it came to dominate Germany and had a very strong army, was known for its disciplined army, and uh, defeated France uh, the, in the Franco-Prussian War. The Ruhr Valley is a very industrial area where you have a string of cities along the valley, and it's known for its, its mining and its industry. That's in Germany again. Waterloo is in Belgium, and it's the famous site where Napoleon lost his war. His, his wars of conquest was defeated by the Duke of Wellington. Holland is another name for the Netherlands. And in Holland you have, uh, in the Netherlands you have The Hague, which is a kind of, uh, we'll say political center. A, a center of administration, but Amsterdam is actually the capital of the Netherlands. Uh, Rotterdam is a major port in Holland, in, in the Netherlands. And Flanders is what uh, Belgium used to be called. So when we talk about In Flanders Fields, it's a poem that was written about uh, the many soldiers who lost their lives in World War I in Flanders, in Belgium, which was basically the battleground uh, the trenches of World War One. Brussels is the capital of Belgium, and uh, Bel Brussels and Strasbourg in in France, on basically just across the border from Germany, uh, are two capitals of the European Union, along with Luxembourg City. In Austria, another name for Austria is Österreich, Österreich, uh, and a major city other than. Uh, you know, Vienna is Salzburg. Salzburg is where Mozart lived, and uh, it's it's famous because of him. The Danube River flows through Vienna and in, into Hungary, and uh, then we move to Switzerland. And the capital of Switzerland is Bern. You just know Bern has a bear pit, uh, and you know Switzerland is known for its its mountainous terrain. Uh, another city that's famous in Switzerland because of its banks is Zurich. So Zurich is a center of finance in Europe. And we move to Italy. Italy is famous because of many things, but uh, 
you know, after the Roman Empire uh, came the Middle Ages and then came the Renaissance. And Florence is known as the birthplace of the Renaissance. You also have Venice, which is the city of the canals uh, made from islands. And so you have canals that you can float, float on around the city. Uh, Sicily is the football kicked by the Italian boot. Uh, it's the island that's just south of Italy. Sardinia is next to, it's, a, it's right next to Corsica, but Sardinia is part of Italy. Uh, Cordoba, we're in Spain now. Cordoba is uh, a Muslim city in Spain, and it was also founded by the Romans. So, but just, it's known for uh, its Muslim heritage. Uh, Catalonia is an area that basically wants to be independent in Spain, and, and Catalan is the language that's that's spoken there. And they have had an independence movement in Catalonia. Then we move to Eastern Europe and Slovakia. Just know the Tatra Mountains are uh, in basically the Western Carpathian Mountains are in Slovakia and. Uh, it's Slovakia is known as the Tatra Tiger as a result. Tiger meaning it's very strong economy. We go to the Balkans and we see uh, Yugoslavia is the name of the country that broke up and became Slovenia and, and uh, Croatia and Serbia and Macedonia and Bosnia and Herzegovina is broke apart. and. When we refer to the Balkans, we mean all those little countries that are a part of the Balkan Peninsula. Uh, Kosovo is an area that has been fought over uh, because the Serbs uh, started basically trying to get rid of the ethnic Albanians there who were Muslim and were different from the rest of the Serbs. And they believed they had a right to control Kosovo. But today, Kosovo has been protected by the United Nations. It's not recognized by all countries, but it's generally considered to be a, a country. And in 1999, there was the bombing by the U.S. of Serbia to make Serbia let go of Kosovo and, and stop exterminating the Muslim Albanian people in Kosovo. The Baltics are those republics that are in the Baltic Sea, and we talk about Ethiopia. Uh, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania are those three Baltic re republics. So we need to know the difference between the Balkans and the Baltics. Monaco is the tiny kingdom on the Mediterranean uh, in basically what part of France, part of the coast of France, and it's its own independent country. It contains uh, Monte Carlo, which is the famous racetrack and, and uh, gambling casino. Things. Balkanization is the process by which any country breaks apart because of the situation and the, the nature of the Balkan Peninsula with all its little language groups and ethnic groups in different countries. When a country breaks apart, we call it balkanization. Feudalism is the government that controlled Europe during the Middle Ages where you have a manor and you have a lord controlling the manor and you have serfs to work on the manor and it was very rural. Uh, it was a system of living and government and economics. Uh, the manor was basically self-sustaining. It produced the food that it needed. Uh, but feudalism gradually changed over the years, but it still left its mark on uh, Europe because of its castles. The Industrial Revolution brought great change to Europe. Uh, started in Scotland and England and then spread to the rest of Europe. And the Industrial Revolution uh, made people move to the cities because there were factory jobs and basically people moved from the countrysides, the manors, uh, to the cities. And this basically started in 1750 AD. Uh, acid rain is one of the byproducts of the Industrial Revolution and everything that happened because of it. When you had factories, they produced smoke and that smoke went into the air and that produced rain, acid rain. And that acid rain over the years has destroyed many buildings and, and created health problems, polluted water. Uh, a, a leftover from the, Europe, the, the Roman Empire in Europe is Romance languages. Romance languages are not connected to Valentine's Day. They are related to Latin. So anything that's derived from Latin is a Romance language. That means Spanish and French 
and Italian and Romanian. Those are Romance languages. Urbanization is what we were describing, moving from the countryside to cities. And that happened very much in the Industrial Revolution, but started even before uh, as uh, people started going to cities to change their life from being peasants or serfs. Uh, we call a group of islands an archipelago, and that comes from Greek words that mean chief sea, meaning the Aegean Sea, but now it doesn't refer to the sea, it refers to islands. So any group of islands is called, called an ar archipelago. So now we're talking about the British Isles, and London Bridge is in London, and it has fallen down over the years and been rebuilt. Uh, and it's an old bridge across the Thames River. Devolution is a kind of government where you have a, a federal government and the smaller parts of that country or empire gain a little bit of self-government. And that means that they have a devolved government that comes from or devolves from the bigger government. And so Scotland and Wales have a devolution, which is self-government. They have their own parliaments. Parliament is a body that makes laws and, and uh, people are elected to parliament or they get that as a right because they own property. Genocide is what happened in Bosnia and in Serbia and Kosovo because of different ethnic groups. One ethnic group hating another ethnic group and wanting to get rid of them. Home rule refers to Northern Ireland and other places around the world where it's connected to an empire, but gradually gets some more autonomy, kind of like devolution, but we call that home rule, being able to take care of your own business and make your own rules and laws. The European Union is bringing Europe together. It's basically the United States of Europe, and it's only been in existence for 30 years, or 25 years, really. Uh, and it's, it's taken a long time for European nations to set aside their differences and to join together economically and socially and financially and now politically. So the European Union is their, is their political connectedness. We already talked about the capitals. Nordic countries are in the north. Nordic means north, and so we're talking about Scandinavian countries mainly, and also Iceland. Fjords are on uh, the western part of Norway, and they are carved by glaciers. Petroleum is found in the North Sea, and so just know Norway has a lot of oil, and so does Scotland. They have access to a lot of oil in the North Sea. Constitutional monarchy refers to a government that has been a monarchy with a king or a queen, and over time they've become uh, they've changed because they have a, a democratically elected parliament and that parliament is the, the real group with power and the king maybe is only a figurehead. Uh, that would be a constitutional monar monarchy. That's what the UK is today. A republic then is when you don't have any royal family at all. Uh, infant mortality rate is when you have, unfortunately, you have babies that don't make it very long in life and in developing nations this is often very high uh, but as nations develop the infant mortality or death rate goes down and that's a sign of development life expectancy goes up because people live longer and so in developed nations people have a high life expectancy social welfare is when the government takes care of people in a way that uh, gives them health care or gives them uh, benefits when they don't have a job or after they have retired. So that's social welfare. And one thing, universal health care, which we don't have in the United States, uh, is especially in Scandinavia, they have universal health care. They, For every citizen, there is health care and you can go see the doctor and it's paid for or very cheap. IKEA is an organization in Sweden, it's all over the world, there's a corporation from Sweden that mainly designs furniture but other household items. And it's a way for Sweden to spread its culture around the world as well. Literacy rate is another way that we measure countries. And so all those Scandinavian or Nordic countries, they have a high standard of living, they have universal health care, a lot of social welfare, uh, high life expectancy, low morta infant mortality rate and uh, the standard of living is very high then. 
and also the literacy rate. The literacy rate is almost 100% in those countries. In Copenhagen, in Denmark, uh, you have Tivoli Gardens, which is like an amusement park, and it's a landmark in Denmark. Uh, agriculture just means farming, and, and so Denmark is more agricultural than the other Scandinavian countries that do a lot with fishing and, and don't have as much farmland. Geothermal energy is what Iceland is known for. That's why it's not really Iceland. It's more like Greenland because it uh, has a pretty mild climate compared to its its latitude. Neutrality has been the, the situation for many Scandinavian countries and for Switzerland through World War II and then on into the Cold War. A lot of these countries, because of their closeness to both Western Europe and Eastern Europe, uh, they have decided to be neutral, but that hasn't always worked out. Uh, some of the countries in World War II, they tried to be neutral and then they were taken over. Father Christmas is supposedly living in Lapland in Northern Finland. and. It, the idea of Father Christmas is connected to the wild man that's on the flag of Lapland. When we talk about location, we can refer to absolute location, which is longitude and latitude, or we can talk about relative location, which is connected to where it is related to other countries or physical features. The White Cliffs of Dover are what you see as you approach England and Dover across the English Channel, you see the White Cliffs rising. The Berlin Wall divided Berlin during the Cold War. It basically kept people from leaving East Berlin and going to West Berlin for freedom and democracy. Uh, in East Berlin was communism. And uh, communism took over Eastern Europe when the Soviet Union uh, basically took over all of Eastern Europe uh, to invade Germany and, and defeat the Nazis. And then they just didn't let go of power in the countries that they took over. The Hanseatic League is a group of cities uh, along the coast in Northern Europe, especially Germany, and they became uh, joined together in a league and they could you know, help each other fight and, and they could trade with each other. And that was during the Middle Ages on into the Renaissance. Guest workers were invited into Germany after World War II, especially from Turkey, some from Greece. And they came, they were cheap labor to help rebuild Germany after it had been destroyed by bombing from the Allies. The Low Countries refer to the low uh, altitude, low sea level uh, countries, below sea level mostly, and uh, there's lots of potential for flooding in those areas too. Uh, and so they have dikes and dams that keep the waters uh, from coming into the cities. Tulips are famous in the Netherlands, and they were even traded for as currency, as money. The only grand duchy in the world is Luxembourg, and that means that a duke rules the country. It's a very small country. Representative democracy uh, is the idea that you, you vote for people who represent you in a parliament. and. Uh, that that's important uh, for many countries to have that representation in government. A right wing government is usually much more conservative and even uh, we would say ne almost like Nazis. OK, neo Nazi is very right wing. Left wing is very liberal and is more like communism. And so you have right wing and left wing that are fighting for power. And sometimes you have people in the middle, but you can have swings back and forth. Socialism, again, more left wing, is the kind of government that many countries in Europe have adopted because it's a, a lot of government help for poor people and elderly and uh, women who have babies, things like that. that. That socialism means high taxes. And so a place like Sweden has very high taxes. Denmark, very high taxes. Capitalism is when you let everything be controlled by the prices that are natural. If people want something, the price goes up, and depending on how much there is of something, the supply, that will determine uh, the price and the demand. So those two things working together determine the price of a product. Swiss bank accounts are famous because usually they are anonymous. We don't know who owns them, and that's because the Swiss, Swiss government feels privacy is more important than anything. Unfortunately, there have been many dictators and bad people who have put money in Switzerland, and nobody knows that they have all the money put there. 
City-states are basically something that developed in Italy before Italy became a nation. And in Greece, you had the beginnings of democracy taking place in a city-state like Athens. So you have the city and the areas around the city, and that is a city-state. The Vatican is a kind of city-state. It's where the Pope has his residence, and that area is actually its own country. It's not part of Italy. It's its own country, and it has relationships with other countries. Uh, so the Vatican is uh, a, a place to go see. The IMF is the International Monetary Fund. It's basically an organization. Countries from all over the world contribute money, and then that money can be lent to developing nations, and loans can be given so that countries can build roads and dams and things like that. The World Bank is another organization. These came out of a conference called Bretton Woods during the end of at the end of World War II, 1944, uh, and it was basically trying to figure out how are we going to help rebuild the countries that have been taken over by the Nazis and have been destroyed. Austerity is when countries have spent too much and they are in deep debt and they need to get out of debt. And so a group like the IMF lends them money, but they have to agree to cut their budget and they can't spend much, too much money so they their life is austere that means very uh, very much that they are saving money not spending money the iron curtain refers to the division between western and eastern europe uh, because of communism in the east you had communism that had taken over and a curtain kept people from knowing what was happening in those countries not a real curtain, just an idea that you couldn't go into Eastern Europe. The Soviet Union was created out of communism and Russia basically took over many of the same areas that the Russian Empire had controlled and maintained control until 1990. Uh, the Tatra Tiger we said was Slovakia. A satellite state was again during the, the Cold War, any small country that was attached to Russia was a satellite, just like you have a moon or a, a mechanical man-made satellite that orbits around something. You had these tiny countries that were orbiting around the big country of Russia. Eastern Orthodox Christianity is the Christianity that was in the eastern part of the Roman Empire and Roman Catholicism was in the western part of the empire. Eastern Orthodox became Russian Orthodox and Ukrainian Orthodox today. Ethnic cleansing is what happened in Bosnia and again in Kosovo. Events. First, let's talk about the Pax Romana. It's 200 years of peace during the Roman Empire. From the time of Caesar Augustus, remember when Jesus was born, Augustus was ruling, and that was God's design, that you would have a time of peace where people could travel back and forth without, being, without fearing that another country's army would attack them and take, take their lives. Uh, the Pax Europea, Pax means peace, Europea means Europe, and basically after World War II, we have had peace in Europe, and that's sometimes called the Pax Europea. The Lockerbie bombing was in Scotland, and it was committed by Libyan terrorists who blew up the plane and killed hundreds of people, many of them Americans. And uh, those people were put in prison, but eventually the Scottish Parliament and judges uh, released them. They released those terrorists uh, back to Libya, uh, at least one of them, because of his health. And many people were upset about that. The Great Potato Famine happened because it happened in Ireland. Remember, potatoes come from North America, but they were transplanted to Ireland and they gave I Ireland a way to support themselves and, and provide food. But when they depended on it so much, when a famine or when a when a, a blight came, a disease affected the potatoes, and they they had to leave. And the government unfortunately did not help them, and so they had to go to the United States. And that's why we have so many Irish immigrants in the United States. The Cold War was not a fighting or not a shooting war between the United States and the Soviet Union, but it it did develop into conflicts all over the world, including North Korea and Vietnam. 
1972 Munich Summer Olympics were important for a lot of reasons, but there was a terrorist attack where Israeli athletes were killed by Arab terrorists. And it's a very sad thing that we have to remember those Olympics in that way. The Thirty Years' War was in the early 1600s after the Reformation when cities and parts of Germany were fighting about whether they would be Roman Catholic or Lutheran or Protestant. And it was a terrible 30-year war and it finally ended with the Treaty of Westphalia. The Renaissance happened during the the 1400s, 1500s into the 1600s, and, and it was a rebirth of learning and the arts in Europe. The Punic Wars were between Rome and Carthage in, in the 200s BC, about the same time that, that Alexander the Great was conquering uh, the uh, Western Europe all the way to India. The golden century of Portugal was the 1400s, the golden century of Spain was the 1500s, and it had to do with their exploration, the Portuguese exploring Africa and even India and the Spanish eventually with Columbus and, and all the other explorers going to the New World. The Reconquista was again Ferdinand and Isabella reconquering the Iberian Peninsula from the Muslim Moors. The Reformation, again, Martin Luther gets credit for starting it, but others also contributed uh, to basically reform the Roman Catholic Church. But what ended up happening is the Protestant churches be began because of that, because the Roman Catholic Church didn't want to change at that time. The Great Recession of 2008 has dramatically changed Europe because it started in the United States because too many houses were being sold to people that couldn't afford them and then they couldn't pay and those properties all became the bank's properties and those banks couldn't afford to have all those properties and, and that created a recession and that affected countries all over the world, especially Portugal, Ireland and uh, and Spain a little bit, but then Greece and many of those countries even almost went bankrupt. The Prague Spring was in 1968 and was an attempt in, in Czechoslovakia in Prague to fight against the Soviet puppet government, the communist government. It didn't work out and Russia eventually sent in tanks and restored order and communism in Prague. The Velvet Revolution was in 1989, and that was the revolution that actually uh, got rid of communism and Václav Havel ended up being president. The Syrian civil war is what is causing mass immigration from the Middle East all the way into Europe, into countries like Germany and France, and in, even into Britain. And that's why Britain right now wants to exit the European Union. We call it Brexit. The war for Greek independence was a way for Greece to break free from the Ottoman Empire. Remember the Greeks were Christian and the Ottomans were Muslim and so uh, many people in England went to fight for Greece, uh, even a poet who died there. The Bosnian War was between, again, uh, different groups in the Balkans and specifically between the Orthodox Christians and Muslims and Muslims were many, many hundreds of Many thousands and thousands of Muslims were killed during that war. They were massacred. And finally, the 1984 Sarajevo Winter Olympics was supposed to be a moment, and it was a moment that showed that Sarajevo in Bosnia was a place where people could come together. World War I started in Sarajevo. So Sarajevo has a history of violence and destruction, but at that time in 1984, it looked hopeful. Unfortunately, Sarajevo was at the center of the Bosnian War and was totally, so much was destroyed and bombarded during that war. Thank you for listening. A lot of information. Hopefully this helps you with your uh, further study.